Have you ever encountered biblical depictions where Jesus, the Virgin Mary, or even figures like Abraham and King David are portrayed with dark skin? If not, then it's time to look beyond Europe. Russia has recently unveiled a collection of biblical icons featuring darker-skinned characters. Now you might be wondering if Russia has added its interpretation to these biblical figures. The truth is quite the opposite. This revelation is as factual as the unending expanse of time. These icons aren't mere artistic deviations. They carry profound meanings, hinting at hidden truths and prompting profound questions about history, faith, representation, and the often overlooked facets of religious art. Pay close attention, for you're about to have a look into a discussion that sheds light on these fascinating revelations. First and foremost, let's start with the person of the most popular name in the world today, Jesus. Mark chapter 4, verse 22. For there is nothing hidden which shall not be manifested, neither anything kept secret that would not be brought to light. For centuries, the prevalent depiction of Jesus Christ particularly in Western cultures, has been that of a fair-skinned man with a beard, long, wavy, light brown or blonde hair, and often depicted with blue eyes. However, the Bible itself provides no physical description of Jesus, and contemporary evidence suggests that he likely looked quite different from the traditional portrayal. The biblical accounts offer scant details regarding Christ's appearance. Our primary sources of information about Jesus come from the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the New Testament. According to these Gospels, Jesus was a Jewish man born in Bethlehem and raised in Nazareth, a town in Galilee, which was formerly part of Palestine and is now located in northern Israel. The Gospels also indicate that Jesus began his ministry around the age of 30, as mentioned in Luke 3.23. However, beyond these basic details, the Bible provides little insight into Jesus' physical attributes, suggesting that he did not possess any remarkable or distinctive features. The historical Jesus likely shared the common physical features of first-century Jews from Galilee, such as brown eyes and skin. However, there is no definitive description of Jesus' appearance. Unlike Old Testament figures like Saul and David, who are described as tall and handsome, there is little mention of Jesus' physical characteristics in either the Old or New Testaments. For instance, when Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, Judas Iscariot had to identify him among the disciples, suggesting they shared similar appearances. Yet the Bible does not delve into the reasons behind their resemblance. It remains unclear whether deliberate omissions were made in the Bible to conceal certain truths, or if the authors simply did not address these aspects. Such questions prompt speculation about the intentions of those who crafted the gospel narrative and whether they deliberately omitted details about Jesus' appearance or merely overlooked them. However, the traditional portrayal of Jesus as a white European figure has faced increased scrutiny amid ongoing reflection on the legacy of racism and the pursuit of truth in society. A significant catalyst for this reassessment stems from recent revelations emerging from Russia sparking widespread discussion and fascination. These revelations center around icons dating back to the 14th century, which have been gathered from various private collections across Russia. These rare and profoundly impactful artworks, many of which were thought to have been lost during the Soviet era, have resurfaced as survivors of a tumultuous history. Without the efforts of museums to preserve them, these icons would have been lost forever. While millions of such icons once existed, only around 50,000 remain visible today. The unveiling of these icons serves as a poignant reminder of the enduring power of truth. Their authenticity prompts us to reconsider our perceptions of the past, particularly in terms of the presence and portrayal of black figures. These artworks compel us to engage in a critical reevaluation of historical narratives and representations. Throughout centuries, these individuals may have remained veiled in obscurity but their rediscovery now illuminates untold narratives, urging us to reconsider entrenched assumptions and rewrite history through a more inclusive perspective. Numerous Russian icons suffered destruction or were dispersed abroad by agents of the Soviet government. Some were clandestinely concealed to evade destruction, while others were smuggled out of the country. Following the collapse of communism, numerous icon painting studios have re-emerged producing works in diverse styles for both domestic and international audiences. Additionally, many older icons that were previously concealed have been unearthed, 
or repatriated from overseas locations. In recent times, the unveiling of black biblical icons has sparked widespread debate across the globe. Some speculate that the icons have darkened over time as a result of aging, while others argue that the depiction of blackness is intentional and accurate, aiming to represent the true skin color of the individuals portrayed. Because they were black people, says Robert Rubin, why didn't their clothes change to black in those paintings or all of the paintings? The true Israelis were black-skinned people, not white. Likewise, the ancient Egyptians. The Rishat structure in Mauritania is also the location of Atlantis. Russians did not change their paintings just as other countries did. They simply kept the true paintings and iconography. Look up ancient maps and you will see that the Kingdom of Judah was later located in West Africa. The Jewish nation was destroyed by Titus. Millions of Jews fled to Africa. They ended up in the west of Africa. From there, they were sold as slaves to almost every part of the world. Do you think the hatred for black people is just normal or a coincidence? No, it was because they, the Israelis, did not keep the commandments of God. Moses informed them of the blessings and curses, as we can see in the Bible book of Deuteronomy. God told them they would lose that land to people they did not know if they disobeyed him. The hatred for the black children of Ham and Shem is because the children of Shem have mixed up with the children of Ham. They are both black-skinned. The prime target of this hatred is the children of Shem. Shem is being punished for his disobedience to his God. Another insightful one from Johnson here says, because black people were the people in the Bible that the Americans turned white when they told the stories to us. But the Russians didn't get the memo. They went off for real history. Songs of Solomon. Chapter 1, verse 5. Revelations, chapter 1, verse 15. Go check it out. It's in the text. It's not because of a candle or anything else these people are talking about. In that case, the whole picture would be black, not just the face and the hands. They are meant to be black because they are black people. This great USA is also a great deceiver, and so many people inherit the wrong lesson from their great-grandparents and their parents to the point where it's so deep that the lie is made true when the real answer is just right there. The unveiling of historical treasures in Russia doesn't end there. The country persists in its revelations of biblical artifacts, with President Putin taking a prominent role in advocating for this cause. Russia has opened its archives to showcase extraordinary paintings of Jesus dating back to the 1400s. The portrayal of Jesus and other significant historical figures in Russia's black icons presents a significant challenge to conventional views of antiquity, shedding light on the extensive presence and influence of black individuals throughout history. Paintings from the 1500s and 1600s featuring black icons, including Jesus and Mary, are featured in a highly regarded book that delves into the history of black people in Russia, Italy, and other regions of Europe. This book showcases intriguing depictions of black individuals in biblical settings, a facet of knowledge often overlooked in the American educational curriculum. However, debates persist regarding the authenticity of these icons. Alex Pizmeni, a software developer and Catholic Christian, has some things to contribute. The Russian Christians adopted Byzantine Orthodoxy wholesale. That, of course, includes the iconography. The fundamental principle of Orthodox iconography is that there are no changes. The icons are, as much as possible, portraits of Christ, Our Lady, and other saints. Further, the styling, mood, garments, and gestures are all fixed in the Byzantine style. So much so that students of iconography refer to these rules as iconographical canon, even though very little of that canon ever went through the normal ecclesial legislative process involving episcopacy and councils. As Russia continues to captivate the world with these revelations, the enduring flame of truth remains steadfast amid the shadows of history. Not long ago, protests erupted calling for the removal of Confederate statues in the U.S., with activist Sean King advocating for the removal of murals and artwork portraying a white Jesus. His concerns regarding the depiction of Christ and its role in perpetuating white supremacist ideologies are echoed by others. Renowned scholars and even the Archbishop of Canterbury have joined the call to reevaluate the portrayal of Jesus as a white man, only recently, on June 22, 2020, writer and activist Sean King announced that he supports the destruction of statues 
that depict a white Jesus. King, who had tweeted his remarks on that memorable Monday of June 2022, noted that historians believe Jesus likely had the appearance of people who typically lived in the Middle East during his time, rather than the white man who is often depicted in Christian iconography. Yes, I think the statues of the white European they claim as Jesus should also come down, King tweeted. They are a form of white supremacy, always have been. In the Bible, when the family of Jesus wanted to hide and blend in, guess where they went? Egypt, not Denmark, he added, tear them down. The remarks swiftly elicited criticism from some users on the platform, including several prominent conservative figures. King clarified that his stance was solely aimed at advocating for the removal of statues depicting a white Jesus, prompted by a tweet from Prageru, a nonprofit co-founded by conservative talk show host Dennis Prager. He further emphasized his position by asserting that stained glass windows and other depictions portraying a white Jesus, along with his white mother and companions, should also be dismantled, as he views them as promoting racist propaganda and reinforcing white supremacist ideologies. To support his argument, King shared an image of a darker-skinned Jesus featured in a 2002 Popular Mechanics article, which scholars believe might be a more accurate representation than those depicting Jesus as European. He added that such an image would have been unacceptable to white Americans who participated in slavery. Experts have long since said that this is likely the most accurate depiction of Jesus. White Americans who bought, sold, traded, raped, and worked Africans to death for hundreds of years in this country simply could not have this man at the center of their faith. Sean King further tweeted on June 23, 2020, a day after he had tweeted his support for the destruction of the white statue of Jesus. A tweet by Jenna Ellis, a lawyer representing President Donald Trump, warned that she would not break if they tried to cancel Christianity, although it's unclear if it was in direct response to King's tweet. Regardless, King responded that what the lawyer was defending here was her whiteness. Christian whiteness needs white Jesus, King tweeted to Ellis. It's not about generosity or kindness. It's not about protecting the vulnerable. It's about whiteness itself. Attack white Jesus to her, and you attack her faith. Amid the wave of protests against racial injustice and police brutality that swept the nation starting in 2020, statues have been dismantled and vandalized. While monuments honoring the Confederacy have been the primary targets, statues of other figures from early American history have also been removed. This movement to remove and deface controversial statues has gained momentum in the UK, Europe, and the US, though it has sparked divided opinions. Critics decry it as mob rule, while supporters view it as a necessary step in addressing systemic racism. Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury and leader of the Church of England, has advocated for a reassessment of Jesus' portrayal as a white man. Speaking to the BBC Today program, Welby was asked whether the way the Western Church portrays Jesus needed to be reimagined. Yes, of course it does, he said, adding that Jesus was portrayed differently in countries around the world. He was regularly in touch with Anglican church leaders from around the world, he said, who did not portray Jesus as white. You go into their churches and you don't see a white Jesus. You see a black Jesus, a Chinese Jesus, or a Middle Eastern Jesus, which is, of course, the most accurate. Welby added that the representations of Jesus were not, however, who we worship, but rather served as a reminder of the universality of God, who became fully human. Addressing calls for monuments with links to the UK's imperialist history and the slave trade to be removed, he said statues in Canterbury Cathedral would be put under review. The question about whether they should all be there arises. Of course it does, and we've seen that all over the world, he continued. We're going to be looking very carefully, putting them in context, and seeing if they all should be there, says Justin Welby. In conclusion, the revelation of these black icons serves as a poignant reminder that history is frequently obscured, yet truth inevitably emerges. These artifacts prompt us to reconsider our perceptions of the past and question established narratives. Should their authenticity be verified, these paintings provide insight into a previously overlooked aspect of history, compelling us to confront the nuances of representation. This discovery underscores the importance of reassessing the narratives we construct about the past. That brings us to the end of yet another video segment. 
Share your thoughts with us in the comments section below. We are always happy to pick from them. Support our work by always hitting that like button in front of you. We are glad to have you. Thank you for watching.